Good afternoon, everyone. Our cosmos revolves in cycles. Historical evidence supports solar output model for climate change. They even reference volcanism. We see it in the ice cores, ash layers. Here we go. One of the most powerful volcanic eruptions. Krakatoa, 1800s. Same one, awakening again. And a thousand miles north, Minbu mud volcanoes start to become incredibly active. What are the chances of these two going off at the same time in the same area of our planet? Solar models, we see where the solar output dropped. Now, can we overlay it with the volcanic aerosols in our atmosphere and the volcanic eruptions recorded across our planet for the last 2,000 years? And if we do get a year without a summer, you're absolutely going to need to know how to grow some of your own food. TrueLeafMarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. The Adapt 2030 links below in the description box. And also join me on Steemit for a blog format. You can scroll through the graphs and images as well as the text that goes along with these videos. Steemit.com forward slash Adapt 2030. Now, if you haven't seen over the weekend, Krakatoa. This is the very famous volcano that blew off in the late 1800s sending a tsunami that circled our planet four times. They heard this eruption thousands and thousands of miles away, ferocious eruption. But it didn't have the year without a summer power that Tambora did in the early 1800s. But nevertheless, this is a volcano that if it does go off, it will have incredible ramifications for Singapore and Jakarta. The world economy will grind to a partial stop as Asia halts all air traffic through and into Singapore and Jakarta. These are major hubs on our planet. Now, at the same time, the Minbu mud volcanoes are starting to become incredibly active. This is in Myanmar. When this thing starts to bubble, the monks actually go and pour milk into where the bubbles came up as the mouth of the dragon. It's a sacred spot, and I could see why. Because when this tick, things start to tick off, they understood that the weather changed. Rainfall patterns changed around in Myanmar. Interesting graphic here of the structure of mud volcanoes and the difference between regular eruptive volcanoes. So if this thing is upticked in mud and, and gas emissions and the eruptions down in Krakatoa, you just have to wonder what's going on under the plate there. So I jumped over onto Google Earth. Take a look, Minbu. You can see the volcano center, that whole but as you circle around the area, anywhere that you see gray are these mud pits that have opened up and are around in the area. Now, generally, it's placid, as you see here. But I was alerted to the increase in activity from a couple of friends I have in Myanmar because I did used to buy coffee there. We were talking about the weather changes and the massive floods that have occurred this year. Places that it hadn't flooded in hundreds of years that anybody could remember watermarks were. But the Mimbu area specifically, and then the surrounding area of Jokpu, the reports are that everything has become active. The hot springs and also the mud volcanoes up in that area all the way over to the coast. It does have some eruptivity, tapers off for years on end. These lithographs were done in the 1800s, showing the increase in the size of the cones in the 1800s. Now, if you haven't been in Myanmar, some amazing places to travel there as well. Bagan and Ramri Island, that's up near Jokpu. But the beaches are really that unspoiled. And these temples at Bagan, you must go see that. It's at least as good as anything that you'll find at Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Now, speaking of these ancient cultures and these ancient cycles that pervade our planet, this is an overlay on sunspot numbers with centennial cycles, Vray cycles, Bray cycles, and grand solar minimum cycles. So you can see that there's more heavy, powerful cycles that interweave with smaller cycles. But what are we really up against here? Because it's very noticeable when we have larger eruptive activity. And now how regular and cyclical are these deposits in the ice cores? That's one thing to ponder in itself. But when we take a look at these areas thousands of miles away, both starting to uptick and then from the National Academy of Sciences, historical evidence for solar output models and climate change, and they even reference as well as volcanism and atmospheric variations. There are some absolutely stunning graphics in this for you to take a look at. This takes us from the Younger Dryas up to the modern era, and what it shows you is the ebbs and flows of civilization based on solar output. 
You can see where the Dark Ages are, or a squeeze point or reduction in human civilization, cold times. And you can see the abundance that we have thrived in during these warm times. Temperatures are not constant on this planet. They're continually moving. And you can see this through historical records. And I just can't believe that the CO2 myth still continues with such ferocity when we have such good scientific data to show otherwise. That it has a minimal impact into the whole climate cycle. That there's so many other variants here that are pushing and changing our weather on this planet. And grand solar minimums would be one of them. This is one of the most important charts, I think, here because it's a shorter time duration, back to 400 BC, that can be overlapped with scientific data and eruptive events that were cataloged through history. So where you see a downturn, it means the solar activity decreased. Now, all we're going to have to do is try to line this up. So keep in mind that left side of the chart there is 400 BC, and you see how it declines. Then we take a look at the next chart here where they're overlapping volcanic activity in different eras across the planet. But notice that 46 BC, that ends up with the exact lowest point in the solar activity. So you wonder, is the correlation here? So we take a look also into some other eruptions that were known and unknown. From Vanuatu to Indonesia a couple of times there. So again, all we're trying to do is match time. So I had to squeeze the bottom chart. It was the prior chart I just showed you to match up with the 500, the 1500 mark here. I put the links for everything below so you can go ahead and cross-reference and do some of your own research. Because when we take a look at some of these other cycles for known grand solar minimums, look at that 1275 era with all the volcanic emissions and around the 1800s, the 1500s, we go back 500, 600 AD. And bringing you up to the modern era here, you can also see how much effect solar radiation reduction there was from the volcanic activity. We got some activity from Pinatubo, El Chinchon, and Agung. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I left everything so you can do your own research because years without a summer are civilization destroyers. And if you like this type of content, try weekly podcast Mini Ice Edge Conversations where I just finished episode number 112 with Sam Corey from The Nation, guest opinion writer. We talked about the grand solar minimum, how this in turn would affect the economy, and how nation states are going to adjust to continue in their power structure and try to hold it all together with bailing wire and duct tape as we go down into the grand solar minimum.